So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this little Aina, or rather this nasty Aina, but also we're going to be taking a look at enzymes. So enzymes is seems to be a very complicated topic for everybody, everybody but really it's not that bad. In, in terms of the real world, an enzyme is like a piece of machinery, okay? Uh, and we know machinery is responsible for making things, right? Or even breaking things, like a hammer can break something. So that's basically what an enzyme is. So an enzyme is like a piece of machinery, but inside a living thing, like inside a human being or an animal. Now, how does an enzyme work and how does it look like? So an enzyme can look like anything, just like... Um, a piece of machinery or a tool can look like anything. It can have any shape, any size, right? So now, based on the enzyme shape, so look at this one. This one has this unique shape. Based on the shape, it will have a specific purpose, just like a um, piece of tool has a specific shape. And based on that shape, it will have a specific purpose, right? A hammer is made into that shape because it has a, that specific function. That's the same thing for an enzyme. So, an enzyme will interact with something, okay? So let me show you. No, not that. An enzyme will interact with something called a substrate, okay? So, what I mean is, so let's take a scissor. A scissor could be an enzyme, okay? It's going to represent an enzyme. And a an scissor can interact with paper, right? So, paper would be a substrate for the scissor. So, in this case, here's the enzyme. This is, these are the two substrates for this enzyme, okay? So let me show you. Because they are made to specifically interact with this area here, okay? They are specifically the right shape, the right size to fit right into this enzyme, okay? What do we call this space here that the substrate, that the substrates will interact with? We call this space the active site, okay? The active site because this is where the action is going to happen. This is where the enzyme is going to interact with the substrates and make a product, make a new product, okay? So, let me show you. So let's move this out of the way. So here we have the two substrates going into the active site of the enzyme. Now, the enzyme will do its magic and make them um, interact with each other because obviously, these two substrates can float around inside your body and maybe eventually they will collide. And when they collide, they can make a product, okay? Because they can combine into one. But this takes so long. It's such a slow process and it's so unlikely to happen. So an enzyme is there to speed up this process, just like a tool. A paper will never cut its, um, will never get chopped up by itself. It needs a scissor. So that's the same thing here. An enzyme will speed up reactions, okay? So it's going to basically act like a little magnet and pull these two substrates towards itself and then make them interact with each other to form a product. So remember, they are substrates, okay? The substrates are the molecules that interact with the enzyme. Now, what is the product? So the product will be what's formed after the enzyme makes the magic happen, makes, does the physical job. So these two will combine together, for example, and then they will form a product. Let me show you. So now we have a product, and this product is going to be um, uh, destined for its own unique action. So maybe these two molecules had a specific purpose based on their structure, but now this product is a different structure, so it's going to have a unique function in the body, okay? So this is the product. So, so far, three important words, substrate, product, and active site, and then, oh yeah, one more, enzymes, right? So what are we missing? So we're missing some key words. Let me show you. So, um, let me show you. Three key words. Complementary, lock and key, enzyme substrate complex. So let's do the easy one. When the uh, substrates bind to the enzyme as such, right, as like this. This is called the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, very simple. Lock and key. Okay, remember how I said the enzyme is a specific shape, and this shape is specifically made to interact with only these substrates, right? It has a unique shape for a unique job. This is called lock and key. This enzyme is specifically made, this lock is specifically made for these keys. It fits exactly. That's the lock and key model, okay? This is the lock and key model. Now, complementary. Okay, when two humans complement each other, it means they 
work well together, okay? Or they are exactly right for each other. Now, that's the same thing here. This enzyme has a complementary structure to the substrates, meaning they work very well together because they're the exact opposite, meaning they fit really well together. So they are complementary. Okay, good. So do you get the gist so far? Now, not only can we can an enzyme take two substrates and make them combine together to form a product, okay, and not only can an enzyme build things like tools can, they can also break things. So for example, um, the substrate can also be this thing. So for example, maybe there's an enzyme and here comes the substrate. In this case, this is the substrate, but not the product because this substrate will now be broken down after interacting with the enzyme into the products. Okay, so now these are the products rather than the substrates. So that's interesting, right? So know, know that enzymes can both make things and break things. So when it breaks things, the, this will be the, this will be the um, substrate. But maybe when this is made, it's the product. Okay, so it can vary. It can depend on the situation. Okay, now I said a lot of things, but now I'm going to put in word form what an enzyme is, just so that you, you, you are clear on it. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst. In simple terms, it is uh, a substance that speeds up a reaction, as I mentioned, that may otherwise take forever to happen. Okay, and what do I mean by catalyst and biological? Biological means it happens in living things. And as I said, we don't find these tools in our body, but these are the tools of our body. So they are biological. They, um, they are in existing things. And a catalyst is anything that speeds up a reaction. And as I said, these two molecules can float around forever and maybe eventually collide and form this product. But this enzyme can speed up that reaction by millions of times. Okay, so it's a catalyst. That's all it is. Now, you need to know that enzymes are absolutely everywhere in your body. They, they regulate almost every single reaction. Without enzymes, you would not be able to exist because the reactions would happen so slowly in your body that nothing would actually be formed. It would take millions of years for things to happen. So, this brings us to the last bit. I mean, to the next bit. What is enzymes made of? An enzyme is a protein. That's what you need to know. Let me show you how. So maybe you've learned this before, but basically proteins are made up of amino acids. So inside our body, we have a bunch of these little structures called amino acids. When we um, put them together, okay, when, we, when your body puts them together, they will form a long chain of these little balls, okay, and they are called polypeptides. I don't know if you've seen this. And interestingly enough, funny enough, you also need an enzyme to make this happen. So these balls will never just form a, a chain like this. You also need an enzyme. So it's funny because you need an enzyme to make an enzyme. Because you need an enzyme to make these polypeptide chains. And then you need another enzyme to make these polypeptide chains fold into these unique structures. Okay? And then you need another enzyme to make these um, polypeptides come together to form a protein. Because many polypeptides, so many of these um, structures, will come together um, to form a protein. And we can see here, this protein is an enzyme, okay? Oh, crap, a a do. So we can see that this enzyme, I mean this protein that we just formed, is actually this enzyme, okay? So that's what you need to know. You need to know enzymes are made up of proteins, okay? And this is the sequence of events that makes a protein. And this sequence of events actually needs their own catalyst. Otherwise, this reaction would never happen. So that's, that just shows how, how important and how, and how enzymes are actually everywhere. Okay, good. So now that we know the structure and we know what they do, what their main ideas are, let's, let me show you a real-life example, and this might clear things up and make it clear overall. So we're finally going to get to using Ronaldo. So here we have Ronaldo, okay? He is very tired, as you see. He's sitting on this field. And he's just thinking about eggs. He's hungry. He wants to eat. So he decides to eat this egg because it has a lot of protein and it will make him really strong and ready, right? So he eats this protein. Um, I mean this egg. And it goes into his stomach, okay? And into his stomach, 
um, it's going to get broken down and stuff like that. But one of the important things that make up an egg is a protein. It's not only made up of proteins, it's also made up of fats, carbohydrates, and all these things. But one key component is a protein. So let me show you. So let's say it's made up of this protein. Okay, say this is the structure of the protein that it's made of. So this protein goes into your stomach, okay, because it's going to get broken down now because this protein is too big to be able to be absorbed into your bloodstream. Okay, so let me show you here. So we know we have our bloodstream around here, okay, and your bloodstream is going to receive all the nutrients from your digestive system so that it can send it to the cells of your body, okay, so that, so that your cells can receive all the nutrients that they, that they could possibly need, okay. Now, this protein is too big to be absorbed straight into the bloodstream, so it, it needs to be broken down a little bit first. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to break this thing down. How are we going to break it down? We need an enzyme. So this thing right here is a little cell in the wall of the stomach, and it secretes an enzyme. Okay, and this enzyme's name, let me show you. Here's the enzyme. This enzyme is, is specifically made to break down this protein, okay, and it's called a protease. Okay, you need to know that enzymes, um, enzyme names almost always end in ACE. So this is a protease because it breaks down proteins. So as soon as you see a name and it has an ACE at the end, you know it's an enzyme. Okay, you know that basically. So this cell secretes this, um, this enzyme and this enzyme is going to bind to this protein and going to break it apart into, it, into the products. Okay, into the products. So they fit with lock and key model. So now it's going to break it down, okay? Um, oh yeah, and you need to bear in mind this, this is important. Um, remember, proteins are made up of amino acids, as I just mentioned, right? They're made up of these chains of amino acids, just like an enzyme, okay? So they also have this. So they're kind of like a really long chain of chains put together. So this protease will break these chains apart, these proteins apart into smaller pieces, just like this, okay? So here we have them. He broke them down into these small pieces, okay, breakdown or degradation. And just like, um, just like the previous one that's made up of proteins, this is also made up of proteins, it's just cut in half now. Okay, it's broken into smaller pieces. So this is what we have now. Now, these two pieces are small enough to be absorbed. It's because this one was too big to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Now, these are small enough. So these can be taken up into the bloodstream, okay? Okay, they're taken up into the bloodstream and now the bloodstream so we just saw one example of what an enzyme can do right the breaking down process so now I'm going to show you how it can build things in a real-life situation so in a real-life situation we have enzymes that can break down the food we eat okay and we need these enzymes so that these food this food that we eat is small enough to be absorbed so once it's absorbed it's now in the bloodstream and now it will get transferred to the cells of our body okay so here we have a lovely cell. Let me give you, an, I need another, another arrow. Okay, so now this bloodstream is going to go to our cells with this enzyme, with this little protein inside, and it will transfer this protein inside. Okay, so it's going to, this protein will go into the cells. Now, we have another enzyme in the cell, only this enzyme is different. This enzyme wants to make a protein. So this enzyme is destined to interact with this little piece, which we got from, our, from, from eating other foods. Okay, so as you saw, we ate this egg, it got broken down, and we absorbed this piece of, pro, uh, this piece of protein and it went into our cells. But it doesn't interact with this, um, it doesn't interact with this component, right? It interacts with a slightly different looking one. So there's a slightly different looking one in the cell. And so when it interacts with these two, it can form a new product, okay, a new protein, and it looks like this. Now this new protein, so this is, you can see, this is the opposite. So an enzyme can both break down something into smaller pieces, but it can also synthesize something from, from smaller pieces. And this new thing that is synthesized will have a diverse array of functions in the body, okay? So this one, for example, might play a role in making the membrane, the membrane of the cell strong and stable, okay? So just know there are so many enzymes, so many in our body, and they all have a different purpose 
and they all bind to different substrates to make different products. And all these different products have different roles in our body, which allows us to be so complicated and do so many different crazy things. So I hope you understand now a little bit better about what enzymes are and how important they really are. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some factors that affect the way enzymes work. Some, there are some factors that can influence them to work better or worse. Okay, so that's what the next video will be about.